Hi, this is Vicki Atkins. I have a dream I want to share with you today. Um, it's one that I had about 20 or 25 years ago. It's been quite a while, but it's one that the Lord put on my heart to share. And um, I'm going to just preface it with saying this throughout the dream, I knew two things. I was looking for my whole point in this dream was to find the holy people of God so that I would be standing with them when the Lord returned. And the other part was that um, that his return was not just soon, it was imminent. It was like it was so immediate that it was though, as though he was already here. We just hadn't seen him yet. And knowing that in the dream, I knew that where I was standing when I saw him face to face was where I would be for the rest of eternity. Now, I understand that that doesn't mean I would literally be standing like I was standing next to a grocery store or something. I would be standing there for eternity. It doesn't mean that. It means that where I was in my relationship, in my walk, in my obedience, in my life uh, here would be where I was going to be through eternity. Sorry about that. And so, anyway, here's the dream. In the dream, I started out in a... Uh, a uh, high school football stadium. There were no players on the field. There was no game going on. There, was, there, were, there were no people in the bleachers. It was nighttime. And underneath the bleachers was a young woman, a young mother who was trying to nurse her baby, but she didn't have any milk, so she couldn't nurse her baby. The baby was crying. The Lord let me know that is the scripture in Matthew 24, where his disciples have asked him, what is going to be the sign of your coming? How are we going to know you're going to Turn. And that was one of the things that the Lord said was going to be the case. He said, uh, woe, I'm going to paraphrase, woe to the nursing mothers, the pregnant women at that time who have to nurse their babies because it's just pretty much not going to be possible. So then uh, he was laying the premise for the, the timing in, in the whole dream. This is where we are now. We are in that place where, <clears throat> excuse me, we are in the end times. I I believe that, and that uh, his coming is really close. So the scene changed, and then I was standing at the edge of a large field, uh, grassy. It was daytime in this in this part of the dream, and there were people all over the field, and they had their hands raised. They were looking up to the sky, and they were calling for Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay, so then I looked in the middle. I was standing at the edge watching, thinking, well, maybe these are the holy people that I want to be standing with. And so I, I watched them for a moment. And then in the center of the field, there was uh, a commotion. And all of a sudden, people, because I was on the outer edge of the field, I couldn't really see what was going on in the center. But I, I saw it. as people began to drop to their knees, all excited, and that spread out across the field, I I uh, I understood that these people must have seen something. They must have thought that the Lord was there. And so I thought, oh, goodness, this must be it. And as, as I started to go down to my knees, I looked and saw this thing that had risen in the center of the field that had grown up in the middle of this body, that had appeared in the middle of this body, was now getting bigger and bigger until it was almost like a genie in a bottle and it was just towering over all of the people and it definitely was not Christ. So I got up and ran, <clears throat> but these people were worshiping. They thought this was, this was the Lord. So I got up and ran. I went to uh, the next part of the dream I was standing in front of a large pavilion there were uh, fast food workers coming in and out of this building and I thought well maybe maybe they're in there so I went inside the building to look and I didn't see anything so I came back out there's more to the dream but it's uh, but I don't have liberty to share it right now so I'm just going to say that's it for now so let me just explain what the Lord told me about that first of all there's not a holy people that we're going to be able to run and find and be with that are going to be the holy people that will sort of ensure that we're going to get to be with the Lord in his kingdom. Um, and that's what I was searching for back then. And in that dream, the Lord was showing me, this is what people are doing. They're running from place to place to place to find the right ministry, to find the right minister, to find the right preacher or prophet or pastor or whatever the case may be. They're trying to find that person, that ministry, that 
anointing, so to speak. They're running to people to have hands laid on them so that they can receive this impartation or that impartation. There is so much wacky stuff going on out there right now. It's insane. And, uh, and it's what was going on in the field in the dream. It was all of the people that really wanted the Lord. And I believe that these people that are chasing after these different ministries and different things are, they want the Lord. But, but what a lot of people are doing is they're searching for the people or the person or the organization to be with. And they are not searching for the Lord. They're not in the depth of relationship. They're not studying. They're easily deceived. They're easily taken off track. It's a big, huge concern to me. It's something that I pray about all of the time. Father, please help us not be deceived. Help us see the truth. Help, see the truth. Help us seek it. Help us seek you. Help us find you, Lord. You say if we continue to knock, you're going to answer. You're going to open the door. We're going to be able to, you know, come in and sup with you. That's what that's what we need to do. So there was that part of the dream with the people that just didn't have a lot of depth. They were just kind of standing around going, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then the part of the dream where there were the fast food workers coming out of the building. If you stop and think about it, fast food really doesn't have any nutrition. Um, it's actually pretty unhealthy. And so there are people that are out there that are giving what they have to give. And I, uh, since these were the workers, I believe that it, it, it's, uh, it may be about church leadership in a lot of ways. It may just be, the Lord knows, just pray about that. But uh, that people are offering what really doesn't have any substance to it. It's not healthy. It's not nourishment. And I'm talking about spiritually. This is what the Lord was showing me. That these are things that spiritually they just don't have any, uh, there's no nutrition in them. So, so if we look at our relationships with him, if each one of us will just go to him and say, I need you to show me, tell me where I'm off. Tell me where I'm believing a lie. I, I remember uh, being invited to minister in another state several years ago. And the Lord told me before I even went, he started talking to me about how in this particular place, there were so many people that were running from ministry to ministry to ministry to ministry. They were just wearing themselves out. And it was just like a circus. So it's time for the body. It's time for the bride of Christ to get quiet before the Lord and say, okay, there's so much stuff going on. It's just like today. I was looking up uh, something that I, I was reading. Uh, I was actually reading the book of Jasher in the Apocrypha this morning. And, uh, and I knew that in the Bible, Jasher was referred to. Um, at least once or twice. So I decided to do a search and I looked, uh, I looked on Bible Gateway and I looked at 59 versions of the Bible. And in only, let's see, in only nine of those versions was the book of Jasher even mentioned. And I thought, okay, what is, we have to realize there's stuff going on. And why are things that should have been put in or left in being taken out? And what does that mean? If, if we don't realize that the enemy is constantly trying to mess us up, then we are absolutely asleep. So I believe that the Lord's saying to us, you have to be still and get before me. You are going to be deceived if you don't come close to me. People are chasing after all kinds of stuff. They're chasing after stuff in the world. They're chasing after stuff in the church. There are people that are so focused on end time stuff that they've lost their attention. And they're, they're not searching for me. They're just searching for signs and wonders. There are people that are people that are just being deceived right and left. And my heart cries out for all of us, please. And I know God's heart does too. Wake up, people. It's time to wake up. We cannot afford to just keep going in the ways we're going. If we're not pressing into him, we will be deceived. So this is my uh, word of encouragement. I believe it's Father's word of encouragement for all of us. Draw close. Draw close to him. Stop listening to all the outside voices. There are so many of them. Get in the word. Get in your quiet time with him, get in the secret place, spend time with him and ask him to begin to peel off any stuff that's 
not right thinking. It's like I said in the dream that I'd had back then. I was, I, I had just come, I was coming out of a denomination. The Lord was bringing me out of a denomination. And during that time, he was having to peel off of me all of the stuff that I had been taught, the belief system that I had that had nothing to do with him, but was man-made. And, and as a result of that, um, it took a long time for God to get a bunch of that junk off of me and for me to be willing to let go of it. We get a hold of stuff. We don't want to believe that what we've been taught by people that are leaders or uh, things that are called the sacred books of a church or whatever those those doctrines of a church we don't want to let go of those things because it it messes with our it messes with our foundation it makes us think oh my gosh lord if if these things that i've learned in this church are not true then why why did you let me go this long why did you allow me to even be in here in the first place and god's going look i use every single thing that you go through if you belong to me you're following after me. I'm going to use everything you go through, and I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you things you didn't know. I'm going to I'm going to use the things that you've been through to help lead others out of deception. I'm going to use the things that you've been through to grow you and to grow the people around you. I'm going to use things that you've learned in ways you cannot possibly imagine. So be encouraged. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't sit down. Don't quit. Don't walk away from your assignment. Seek Father God every single day. Pray for me. I'm praying for you guys. <laughs> and I hope you come back and visit me again soon. This is Vicki Atkins. And uh, you can go to my website if you want to. There's a link there to my blog and find me on Facebook as well, but most of what I do is going to be here on YouTube, my website, and my blog. So uh, my web address is Vicki Adkins, V-I-C-K-Y-A-D-K-I-N-S dot com. Uh, you can reach me, you can email me through there. Just um, I'm going to get off here now because it's been almost 12 minutes and I didn't want to go quite this long, but I appreciate you staying with me and I'll talk to you soon. God bless y'all. Thanks. Bye-bye.